All right, so now that we saw how to calculate the curl of a vector field, I think it is important to start talking about when a vector field is conservative. So a vector field F is conservative whenever its curl is equal to zero. So that means that every single element of this resultant vector field is going to be zero. Why is that important? Well, the significance of this is that if the vector field is conservative, then we can always find a scalar field, little f, that satisfies the following relation. So basically, if vector field big F is conservative, we can always find a scalar function such that the gradient of that function is exactly equal to that vector field, because we know that the gradient of the scalar function is a vector field in itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through an example in two dimensions and then one in three dimensions and we're just going to see how we can do that. So the first step is of course proving that the vector field is conservative. So to do that we're going to calculate the curl which we know is expressed as a 3 by 3 determinant. But now you notice that this vector field only has two components which implies that the third component or the set component is always going to be zero. So now what we do is we calculate the, the curl by simply taking the cross, um, cross multiplying the determinants. So in the first case we get the following, we have 0 minus this quantity, then we have the j component, and then we have the kth component, and this is what we get. A further simplification happens in this case because we notice this is a function only of x and y, and this means that whenever we have a partial with respect to z, then that's just going to be zero automatically because there's no dependency on z here. And then on this side, we're also going to have zero. And then this leaves us with just one component. So basically, we're going to have this x fy minus y fx. So we're going to find out what that is. So we're going to get well, first of all, we got to differentiate this component with respect to x, so that's going to give us um, 8x. So let me just write it here. 8x to the power of 3y cubed minus, now we're going to differentiate this component with respect to y, and that is going to give us the following. We're going to have 8x cubed, y cubed. And then we subtract these two, and it turns out that they're both zero. So indeed, because this uh, every single component of this curl is zero, then the vector f is conservative. So we just proved that. And in general, for any function, for any vector field of just two variables, what happens is that if we have the following, if we have the following uh, result, so basically, if this component is equal to this term then what's going to happen is the vector field is conservative. So this is what we would normally do when we have a function of just two variables here, because the curl is always going to reduce to just this. If this condition is satisfied, then we know this component is zero, everything else is automatically zero because this z component is zero, so that means that the vector f is conservative. But of course, taking the curl like this is a more general way of doing it, and this is what we would do in the case of three variables as well. Alright, so what else can we do with this? Well, now that we know that this particular vector field is conservative, we can now find a scalar function such that the gradient of that function is equal to this. So how do we go about finding that? Well, we want to find some scalar function x of y, such that taking the gradient of that is going to be equal to the vector field x, y, and this essentially means that we're going to match the terms, so we know that the first element of this vector field is going to be partial of f with respect to x, then this one is partial of f with respect to y, and then we're going to match this to the components of the vector field. We have fx, fy, which is in fact those terms here. So we have 2x cubed, y to the power of 4 plus x, and then we have 2x to the power of 4y cubed plus y. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, if we take this component, this has to be equal to that, and this has to be equal to that. So let's start with the first component. We say that the partial of this scalar field with respect to x is equal to this. So 2x cubed 
y to the power of 4 plus x. And now what we can do is we can say, okay, so let's integrate both sides with respect to x just to get an idea of what that function is going to look like. So we're going to get f of x, y is going to be equal to the integral of this 2x cubed y to the power of 4 plus x. And this is with respect to the x. So let's see what this becomes. So we're integrating just with respect to one variable, so we're going to treat y as a constant. So we're going to get x to the power of 4, y on 4 over 2, plus x squared over 2. And now we're going to have some constant. But remember, this constant is not actually going to be just a constant. It's going to be a function of y. And the reason for that is that we're integrating a function of two variables with respect to only one variable, which means that we could easily have a function that is only a function of y here. And if we differentiate this with respect to x, this is just going to completely vanish to give us this function. So our best assumption is to assume, our best choice is just to assume that this is going to be a function just of y. So what do we do to find that function? Well, what we do now is we're going to take this expression and we're going to differentiate it with respect to y so that we can match it to this side and then that should allow us to solve for this unknown function. So now we're going to grab this function, differentiate it with respect to y. So differentiate this, this is going to become 2x to the power of 4, y to the power of 3. And then this is going to be 0. This is going to become g prime of y because we are differentiating with y first. Now this expression here should be equal to this according to this um, relation that we have here. So if we set this equal to 2x to the power of 4y cubed plus y, then we find out that if we can actually easily cancel out both sides of this equation, so this goes with that and this goes with that. And then what we're left with is the following. We have dg over dy, which is essentially just this, equals to y. So now if we want to find the function g, we just integrate both sides. So we're going to get g as a function of y is going to be equal to integral of y dy. And then this becomes y squared over 2. And now we're going to have some constant, so let's call it constant c. In this case, because we only integrate a function of y with respect to itself, then we know that we're going to have a, a numerical constant instead of just a function. So now what we do is we take this result, plug it back into the original equation, and this should indeed be the final result um, to our question. So we have the scalar field, x to the power of 4, y to the power of 4 over 2 plus x squared over 2 plus y squared over 2 plus c. And it doesn't really matter what this is because it's just a numerical constant. But this is essentially what the scalar function is. This corresponds to this relation here. And we can actually prove that this is the correct answer because if we take the gradient of this function, we should get back to our original vector field. So let's take the gradient of this. Now the first component is going to be the derivative of the whole thing with respect to x. So this becomes 2x to the power 3, y to the power 4, plus x. The second component is the derivative with respect to y. So this is going to become 2x to the power 4, y cubed. And then this becomes plus y. And does this equal the vector field? Well, if we go back here, well, it turns out we can match term by term, and it is indeed equal to the vector field. So we just found a potential function that corresponds to this conservative vector field. And in the next video, we're going to perform another, we're going to solve another example, but we're going to take a vector field of three variables just to show you how this process can be extended to multiple uh, higher number of variables.